Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and you've heard me talk a lot about Commander Legends, but it really took a whole team to make this set possible and to design all of the cards in it. So today I wanted to give them a chance to talk with you about their favorite legend design and how they would build a commander deck around that legend. Ready? Let's go. Hi, I'm Annie and I work on the Magic Design team. And I'm here to introduce you to Averna, the Chaos Bloom. Uh, I don't have the card on me, so this is the closest approximation I could find um, of Averna, who is a green, blue, and red aligned elemental kin. Uh, you might remember similar creatures from the 2020 core set like Cloud Seer and Lathe Conjurer. They have that iconic mask look. In my first month of working at Wizards, I pitched this line of text during a mini design team and honestly totally forgot about it over the years. When Gavin told me that it became Averna and is real, uh, I was super surprised, but also super happy. Uh, I think it's a really fun design. I love Cascade. Bloodbraid Elf is like one of my top 10 favorite cards ever. And um, I just wanted you to like care about all those land cards you Cascade past. Usually you're just like, oh, like what spell am I gonna get? But like now you get to like pick one of your cool lands uh, to put into play as well. The kind of deck I build with Averna is a ramp and landfall strategy that, you know, benefits from the card advantage you get. Um, from playing Cascade cards. Zendikar Rising and past Zendikar sets have loads of different landfall cards to choose from. Since we're playing blue, we can do the Retreat to Coral Helm combo with the Bounce Land and Sakura Tribe Scout to get infinite landfall triggers. So you can play Scoot Swarm to make tons of tokens, you play Morag Fury of the Coom to get a bunch of attack steps, or our little buddy Ruin Crab to mill everyone out. Even if you don't want to go infinite, hitting a ramp spell off of Cascade will get you a decent amount of landfall triggers. In order to trigger Averna's ability as much as possible, you basically want to jam in every card with Cascade ever. So Shardless Agent and maybe even Throws of Chaos. Um, Commander Legends also has a bunch of new Cascade cards, so check those out for sure. And there was like a huge one, Maelstrom Colossus, like heck, maybe we can ramp up to that, who knows. Personally, since we get to play our big friend Maelstrom Wanderer and all sorts of different Omnaths, I'd argue there's a bit of an elemental theme you could go for. Throw in some elementals that care about other elementals like Risen Reef and Creeping Trailblazer. And if you want to go all in, those type boosting artifacts like Icon of Ancestry and Vanquisher's Banner. So I hope you have fun cascading alongside Averna in your future commander games. Say bye, Averna. Hello, my name is Noah and I work on the Watsi sales team, though I moonlight as a vision designer. During Commander Legends Vision, we created a long list of cardless characters and Hans immediately piqued my interest. I felt for a design to be successful for him, it really needed to communicate both his sense of exploration and foolhardy recklessness. Many vision stage card designs are fully reworked through set and play design, which makes me extra pleased to see that Hans has largely remained unchanged through the process. Now that he's headed out into the wilds, I've been thinking, what kind of commander deck do I want to build around him? First, it's important to properly prepare for any expedition. We know Hans is going to run headfirst into danger, but I'd like to see him stick around for more than one turn. I'm thinking some of the old standbys like Vigor, Dark Steel Plate, Eldrazi Monument, and Yavimayan Hollow, but also some less common gear like Mage Bane Armor, Asceticism, and Regeneration might work for him. Next, I'm planning to bring in some scouting gear. Now, there's plenty in this realm for spikes. Worldly Tutor, Sylvan Library, Sensei's Divining Top, Miri's Guile, or the newly reprinted Scroll Rack, to name a few. But depending on your playgroup, you may want to lean towards Cream of the Crop, Mystic Forge, Experimental Frenzy, and Explorer's Scope. Less consistent for sure, but powerful in their own right. Lastly, there's the question of, what does Hans find? There's nothing wrong with filling your deck with Commander's biggest and baddest creatures like Craterhoof Behemoth or Terastodon, but I'm looking forward to theming out Hans' expedition. There's more than enough cards in his color identity to have Hans traipse carelessly through just about any of Magic's most popular planes. Regardless of locale, I'm thinking Hans is a pious man, and I plan to include the six Theros gods in his color identity, who most of the time will be above such worldly matters as picking a fight with him. I hope you're as excited for Commander Legends as I am, and happy brewing! Hey there friends, Robert Schuster here from Wizards of the Coast. I work on Magic and other future digital efforts for the company. Today, I'm here to share with you an absolute legend from Commander Legends, Amareth the Lustrous. Originally, 
I designed this card for what we affectionately called homework. That's where outside of our design team meetings, we go back to our desk and try and come up with a card that will specifically fit the hole we're looking for. So if you wanna play along at home there, I'm gonna give you the prompt and then you can pause the video and come up with a design and then come on back and I'll share with you what I put in. So the problem was this, green and white drafters were not having enough cards in their hand in the mid to late game to stay relevant. So go ahead and pause and then I'll come back with my card. All right, welcome back. I came up with Daniela the Categorizer. She was a legendary 4-4 angel with flying with the text, whenever a non-token permanent enters the battlefield under your control, look at the top card of your library, and if it shares a type with that permanent, go ahead and put it into your hand. When I pitched it in the design team meeting, I called it drobbling season. Uh, but Gavin saw past that terrible pun and as the set lead put this card into the file, and sure enough, the next time we had a green-white drafter, they were able to keep their hand full into the mid to late game. Now, let's fast forward to when Gavin hands the set off from Vision Design into Jules Robin's very capable hands to deliver Commander Legends. He added three color archetypes to the file, and what's now Amrith the Lustrous picked up blue as well. She's really fine in the 99 of any Commander deck you put together with these colors, uh, as long as it's lower on instants and sorceries, you need permanence in there to keep the cards coming. I've included a list down below that you can look at that sort of gives you a shell of cards that I like to play with her. I'll call out a, a couple that are great, but if you get stumped, go and look at other flickering lists like Brago or Rune to find some cards that can help you bring in permanence in and out of the battlefield. Cards like Captain of the Watch, that gives you four triggers. And if you get a nice run of creatures, that's a lot of cards in your hand. Or how about a personal favorite of mine, Druidic Satchel. What's that a land? Put it into play. What's that a creature? Put it in my hand. But the trickiest thing that I've come up with so far, and maybe you can top this, is play a land like, say, Blink Moth Nexus. Go ahead and use it to turn itself into a creature. And then when Amareth's trigger resolves, if it's a creature or a land on the top card of your deck, it goes straight into your hand. I can't wait to see what you grew up with, Amareth. So hit me up on Twitter, at Robert J. Schuster, and I'd love to see those deck lists and any great stories you have from playing her. Hello friends, my name is David McDarby and I'm an operations administrator and game designer here at Wizards of the Coast. Today, let me weave you the tale of Gen, Arcanum Weaver. So exchange is one of my favorite things to do in the game of Magic the Gathering. Uh, resource conversion is one of the coolest things that I like to do in any game, but it's also one of the most dangerous. One of my ways that I make cards is to look at an existing card that I really enjoy playing with, but maybe is not correct for the current Age of Magic and playing in Commander. So that card is a Goblin Welder. Um, what if we took Goblin Welder, but we made it enchantments? So you would add Y to the color identity, and I would not give you the ability to arrange your opponent's graveyard and battle at the same time. That's a lot of onboard complexity for one mana. So in the great initiative to expand the Boros Legion's color identity in Commander, I submitted a red-white Goblin Welder. Turns out uh, we actually added black to him. So now traditionally that's a nerf, but now you can play the black cards in Commander. So it's actually a buff. And in fact, I made you a deck list to illustrate just exactly what I'm talking about. Let's take a look. So you can sacrifice an enchantment you control to bring back one in your graveyard without casting it. That's right, we're playing with the biggins. I'm talking Eldrazi Conscription, Debtor's Knell, Grave Betrayal, these big impactful enchantments. And do know that while Gin can only affect your own graveyard, you can still bring back that Eldrazi Conscription on another player's attacking creature, but do try to have a plan for that creature after they've killed all your other opponents. Uh, but how do we get these cards in the graveyard? Well, we've got Format All-Star, Faithless Looting, Cathartic Reunion, and good old Wheel of Fortune to make sure these big, expensive enchantments are in the yard where they belong. But how do we bring them back? Well, we, for the third piece of this crazy weaving combo, we need cards like Dragon Mantle, Scourge Mark, and Angela Gift. Little cards to get the greases going on this engine so you can sacrifice them while still drawing cards along the way. And while Gin can only bring back enchantments, uh, you're not limited to only enchantments in the end result with cards like Anime Dead, Dance of the Dead, and Necromancy. Uh, Necromancy actually is a bonus that you can cast it as though it had a flash, so it leaves play, but then you can bring it back the next turn. So that's actually turns a non-bow into a combo. Uh, we've got cards like Frexine Arena, Outpost Siege to get the cards flowing. Uh, my favorite way to get the cards flowing in red is Stolen Strategy because you don't even know what you're going to get. And isn't that great? Do know that Sagas work really well with Gen because much like Necromancy, they will come into play, do a cool thing, and then leave. So we've got Elspeth Conqueror's Death, Phyrexian Scriptures, and the ever-favorite Via Crow and War. 
to try to gain control of creatures and then sacrifice them when you're done. But how do you actually win? Well, it's great attacking with a debtor's knell when you have cards like Opalescent and Starfield of Nyx in play. So all these dirtling enchantments to stick around, do a thing and just stay there. We can just kill your opponent with uh, Oblivion Ring or perhaps an Oubliette as you popper players are a big fan of. And finally, you've got a bunch of weird things like Haphazard Bombardment, Dead Man's Chest, and Frenzied Fugue. These cards you probably haven't seen them played very often, but work especially well with Gen Arcanum Weaver to sacrifice them, bring them back, and just do all kinds of wonky things. If you want to see the full description of the deck, the deck list is down below. And back to you, Gavin. Thank you so much to Annie, Noah, Robert, and David for designing these four awesome legends. Not to mention doing this interview today. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this, I have an episode coming out later this week with four more interviews with other designers, so stay tuned for that. And please let us know what you think about these legends in the comments below. We're all going to be watching. I'll talk with you again on Wednesday, and in the meantime, may you have a lot of fun enjoying your favorite legendary creatures. You got this. We're gonna get to draft it and then play with the people who actually helped work on the set with me. Totally exciting. It's gonna be rad. Let's join this draft queue. Let's see, let's see how this thing works out. Here we go. Eight players in the queue. Everyone's been waiting on us because we have some technical issues. And uh, all right, here we go. So first pack is up.